Hey guys, welcome back to the Snapper and Chronicles. Today we're coming back at you with another Ratchet video. This time something, uh, I would say a little bit obscure. Uh, this is a gray Ratchet, gray tools from Canada. And the model number on this is 5297. But before we jump into it, if you like these videos and find my content a little interesting, could you please give me a like and also subscribe to this channel. Okay, gray. We don't see too much of gray uh, in the States. Unfortunately, uh, they seem to be an industrial brand. Uh, as you're going to see in a minute, this screams industrial. It's pretty heavy duty. Um, there's, they still around. Company started maybe over a hundred years ago. Something like, I think 1912, if I'm not mistaken. And they're still around uh, recently, still family owned until recently. I think they, they sold, they sold the company recently to uh, a couple of in individuals but still made in Canada, uh, still industrial. Here's a look at the ratchet. This one's a half inch uh, drive. So we see here. Kind of interesting handle. Uh, don't see this design too much in ratchets. Here's the end. This is of the box head variety. And you can tell there's a some sort of bat wing pole in there from the switch going back and forth. And you can also tell that this is very coarse. Some pretty good reviews online from Grey Tools. Uh, people seem to think that they are comparable to US Snap On. They make very heavy duty tools. It has two screws here holding the head together. Here is what they look like just regular looking screws. And these are the kind of reviews I like to do, kind of more obscure stuff, stuff that you don't see too often, you know. That's why you don't see me do a lot of uh, of uh, craftsman ratchets, especially uh, the ones that are really popular because it's like everybody's seen those and everybody has those, you know. I like I like to do reviews on stuff that's a little bit a little bit different okay this one has two plates has a plate in the front and a plate in the back so keep that in mind if you take the screws out that everything doesn't go flying and here is the plate the first plate these plates are huge see the thickness of that plate and they're pretty heavy so a very thick plate as the hole for the protrusion in the paw. And here's the gear. The gear on this is only 20, only 20 teeth on this one. This gear is not bad. Uh, a couple of teeth look like they've been kind of knocked around. Mm, there's one here you see the tip is kind of a little bit not too bad but the tip looks like it was sheared off the rest are pretty pointy as you can see there here's another one it's like some knucklehead uh, really clamped down and sheared the tip off of that tooth but all in all not too bad there's a little bit of pitting on this one Here's the ball detent, looks pretty good. Feels feels regular. Looks well centered. Okay. 
And here's where you got to be careful. Uh, you can push. If yours is in good shape and not too rusted, these plates might be hard to get out and you might have to like hit them a few times to uh, and put a little maybe WD-40 around the edges to get to get it to break. Let me see. Remember there's a ball underneath so you don't want it to go flying and here is the ball it looks it's a pretty big ball over there and here we have the pole the pole doesn't look that huge doesn't look that big but it's just one tooth there and the switch here has another screw and that screws off and under the screw there's like a ferrule for the screw you can see it there and this is a Doyle screwdriver and yes the magnet works pretty good on this one all right and then the switch just peel it off and it has like a box opening and the protrusion on the pole is a semi box also so they fit together like that Here's what the switch looks like. Looks like it was knocked around a little bit there. And this is what the paw looks like. Not too bad a shape. The tips look okay on the paw there. That's the bottom. And this is where it rides the other plate it stabilizes the pole there and in the middle here there's a spring and this is what the head looks like without all that stuff looks pretty decent uh... looks pretty heavy duty the broaching seems okay looks pretty clean not too bad it's like there were some passes here you can see like three little circles and the other side and there's a big hole for the spring down there and we can see that this one was hit this handle's been hit a little bit there maybe that's why it's missing some of the crowns on those teeth have been sheared off maybe somebody took a hammer to this trying to break a bolt and took some of those teeth tips off all right to get this back together uh it's kind of a roundabout way to do it okay you put the spring there and you get your ball detent I mean the ball from the spring rides on top of the spring and you balance it there sort of like this okay let's orient the the paw we see that the letters are up front here so the back of the paw is like this and hopefully this will work and you just hold it down like that okay now what I want to do is get the back plate and put that in position
Okay, like that. Okay, that helps. Whoops. That helps hold the pole in place. Now, you can take your gear and stick it in there. Remember, you got to hold the back plate because it wants to fall out. So, I'll put a finger back there to hold that. And now, you take your front plate where the switch is, where the protrusion for the switch is. And it has the on and the off on it. And you seat that. It could be a little tricky, but there you go. Okay, make sure you hold both sides now. And now you can put your screws in. You know what? I did this backwards. I put the... I put the... <laughs> okay, let me try that again. I took the plate off. And now I'm going to... Holding the back plate. And holding the paw. Now I'm going to drop this in the correct way. Okay. It should look like that. Now you take your front plate with the letters here, the on and the off, and you drop that, you drop that onto the mechanism, remember always hold that back plate because it's going to want to, everything's going to want to come out the back, and you put your screws in. tightening okay now what's left to do is to put your switch on you take your switch you slip it on like that and you take your ferrule and you drop that in there like that now you screw tightening and test it out to see if it's working yeah it's working pretty good so there you go that's uh, the gray Canada 5297 ratchet uh, half inch drive it's a beast of a ratchet uh, 20 teeth so you can really this is almost like a a breaker bar uh, as far as as far as putting torque on this pretty good uh, what would I rate this it was people were saying this is kind of comparable to a uh, snap-on yeah this is up there this is pretty up there this is a uh, heavy-duty industrial you know so if you see one of these if you're lucky enough to find one uh, pick it up check it out all right guys until next time